In this video, I'll be building a full suspension electric mountain bike. This is a project I've always wanted to build but kept putting off due to how expensive it is to build an e-bike. However, after seeing how well my last e-bike video performed, I figured the time was right to finally pull the trigger on this project. If you missed that video, it's linked right here. The conversion kit came well packed with sufficient styrofoam to protect the important components of the bike. If you order this kit with a battery, it should arrive in a separate parcel because of the shipping constraints that are present in shipping high capacity lithium ion batteries. Both packages took two weeks to arrive at my doorstep, which is faster than average for a parcel this size. The donor bike for this conversion is a 2013 Giant Trance X3. The bike is rocking 26 inch wheels with a 120mm Rock Shox XC32 front fork and a 55mm Travel Giant Air R rear shock on a Horst Link suspension geometry. The one concern I had with full suspension e-bike builds was the lack of usable space in the triangle due to the presence of a rear suspension geometry. Normally, this isn't much of an issue on a mountain bike, but on an electric bike that has a bunch of electronics and a massive battery that needs to be strapped onto somewhere, a constraint in space is a big considering factor for your donor bike. This frame has a surprisingly large triangle which makes it the perfect candidate for an e-bike conversion. In my testing, the battery that's included in this kit, a 13S 5P battery, has a range of approximately 54 kilometers and is composed of 65 18650 lithium ion batteries housed in a Hylong e-bike battery case. Included in the kit is a 2 amp 54.6 volt charger which would take approximately 9.6 hours accounting for approximately 80% operating efficiency to charge the battery from 0% to 100% SOC. Now normally, I would have preferred a faster charger, but in this instance, I wouldn't be comfortable using a charger that's capable of pushing more amps because barrel jacks simply should not be used on an e-bike battery where high wattages pass through it. I would have preferred a plug rated for higher currents like on my previous e-bike build that used an XLR plug for the battery interface, but I digress. Mounting the battery was a bit of a challenge because of the cable mounts on the bike. Using a Dremel and a circular sanding band, I sanded the cable mounts flat and added a light coat of spray paint to mask the color of the aluminum. Then I attached the included battery anchor to the bike. The battery anchor is a lifesaver and is plenty sturdy with just one screw because it happens to rest on the mount that holds the shifting line in place. Finally, using the two included hose clamps and heat shrink tubing, I secured it down to the frame. This is one of the things I love about this specific kit. They've thought of every little detail, even to include the heat shrink and plastic padding to prevent the hose clamps from biting into the paint on the frame. The controller included in the kit is a 48 volt 25 amp controller rated for approximately 1200 watts of peak power. Similar to the controller I used on my last e-bike, which is also rated at 48 volts and 25 amps, this one has a much smaller footprint, which makes it significantly easier to mount in the triangle with the included controller case. The kit also comes with a nice LED display that displays the battery state of charge in 25% increments, your current speed mode, your average speed, top speed, current speed, trip distance, and odometer distance. Entering the settings mode, I can adjust various settings such as current limiting, speed limiting, wheel size, pedal assist sensitivity, and much more. The kit also comes with mechanical brake levers for cable brakes, magnetic brake sensors for hydraulics, which is what I used, two different pedal assist sensors, and a six gear cassette. Additionally, a cable management fastener, a torque arm, and a full tool set that included a cassette tool, crescent wrench, tire levers, and finally a set of adjustable hex keys. I've yet to come across any e-bike kit that comes with these extras, so it was nice of them to include these. This would have been nice if it was included in the last build I made as I had to go out on my own to buy these tools to put the last bike together.
Included in the kit is a Shang-Yi 1200 watt motor with a rated torque figure of 40 newton meters. I've personally never heard of Shang-Yi the motor company so I can't speak as to how they will last, but at first glance they seem well built and in terms of power, it's similar to the other 1200 watt e-bikes I've ridden with a top speed of around 50 kilometers per hour. The width of the motor sits at 135 millimeters and seats perfectly into the dropouts of the frame. Unfortunately, the kit does not include a brake rotor, so I grabbed the one that was originally mounted on the wheel and installed it onto the motor, and it works fantastic. It rubs evenly on both sides and slides right into the frame. Another part you'll need to source yourself is the tube and the tire. Fortunately, I had an extra set of knobby tires and a 26 inch slime reinforced tube, so I popped these on and I was off to the races. I couldn't recommend these slime reinforced tubes enough because they have saved me countless times from a flat when I'm out riding, and changing the tubes on a rear hub motor e-bike is an absolute pain in the ass. Overall, this process of putting the bike and the motor together was a breeze, compared to my previous build which ran into a handful of clearance issues on both the hub and the brakes. To conclude, the rear suspension makes the overall riding experience a treat, simply because it eats up all the minor imperfections on the road, and trail riding is where this bike really shines. When blasting through gravel trails, the front and the rear suspension work in conjunction to keep both wheels planted, whereas on my hardtail e-bike, the motor would hop and bounce on bumps that were taller than an inch. Now, in my last video, many of the viewers were curious as to what the cost of the bike was, so here's the rundown for this build. I sourced the frame off Facebook Marketplace for $500, the kit was $1,300, and the pedals were $25 off Amazon. In total, this bike costed $1,825 Canadian dollars to build, and the kit was provided to me by ebckit.com, but the opinions I've expressed in this video are solely my own and have not been influenced by the team over at ebckit.com. And that's it from me, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like and subscribe for more projects videos to come. And that's it from me today.